this is a giganto freaking enormous gap. And believe it or not, filling it up is the only option I have here. It's an option that you may be faced with someday. And like me in this instance, you might not be super proud of the result, which is something I'll show you later. But first things first. We have some holes to fill along with the giganto freaking enormous size 11D gap. Let's see if the uh, auto-generated closed caption YouTube things can keep up with those words, huh? Anyway, in order to fill these holes up, we gotta prep them correctly. And since I have two valve covers to do, I'm going to skip the correct prep on one of them and show you what happens as a result because I didn't get a whole lot of footage of this thing otherwise. This is a super simple, easy job. Now, since these valve covers are a cast material, we need to get a nice fresh layer of metal to work with since cavities, like these bolt holes, often keep trapped in dirt and oil and grease and, you know, stuff like that contained within them. The fastest way I have found to clear all of them out is to drill them out to a diameter that is only slightly larger than its current diameter. Now, this only takes about a minute or two depending on how many holes you have to do. The coating around the holes has already been removed by the customer ahead of time, and he was also super nice and labeled the process for each one of these holes before he dropped them off. And I absolutely love customers like this. I mean, it's just in, out, hello, goodbye. It's super easy. But if the coating around the area to be welded is not removed, then you need to remove it and charge accordingly. Now, the one step that I'm going to leave out for demonstration purpose is relief drilling. Now these bolt holes are blind holes, which means they do not go all the way through the valve cover. When you try to weld over a blind hole, heat will build up within that cavity. Heat in enclosed spaces creates pressure, which has to go somewhere. 99% of the time, that somewhere is right back out of the cavity through the molten metal that you are trying to fill it with. The result is a fisheye that forms on the top of the weld. Now, aside from being really pesky to chase out, you'll actually spend more time dealing with either adding way more filler to it, which takes way longer to grind down and finish, or you'll grind and finish enough to where you have to go right back over and weld it back up again. All of this extra work is more time than it takes to drill a tiny relief hole through the valve cover before you weld it. So make sure that the relief hole goes in there if you're drilling a blind hole. Now, cast aluminum can be a relatively tricky metal to weld because it has several pores contained within the material itself. Those pores, combined with the residual casting particles, all combine to create a very pesky byproduct which we often refer to as junk. In order to make a successful weld, we first have to run the torch over the top of the casting to push out any junk below the surface. This allows a fresh layer of aluminum to form on the surface which we can weld to. You have to basically recast that layer before you can weld to it. Now, if you don't have enough torch time pushing all the junk out, you're going to end up with constant pinholes and a lot of issues like particles floating in your pool, porosity, etc. So make sure you take your time and don't add the filler until all the junk is displaced and the bubbles are gone. Now, welding holes can be super easy or super tough, depending on the person and your experience level. The trick here is to read the pool and understand that you are the one who's in control of the machine. Ideally, you're going to use just enough amps via the foot pedal to control what the metal is actually doing. You need just enough to keep the edges molten while you add a small drop of filler. Not to be confused with just throwing a clump in there or stuffing the filler in there, hoping that it, you know everything goes swimmingly, right? You need, you need just enough, right? So how much is just enough? Well, the answer is actually right in front of you as you're welding. There really are no settings for cast aluminum. I mean, settings are for microwaves and TV dinners. You just have to find that sweet spot. So if you can see a nice weld pool like what you see on the screen here, then you're just right. Notice how the weld pool is actually contained in a certain spot. And as I move the torch around, the weld pool follows with it. Now, if it was one gigantic weld pool and everything starts to melt down and stuff like that, then you're obviously too hot. If the weld pool is not even a pool at all, and the filler is just balling up and sticking all over like solder or something like that, then it's obviously way too cold. You just gotta find that sweet spot and be able to read and adjust as you go. The same theory and practice applies to welding giganto friggin'normous gaps. It's really all about the control. Now, I'll tell you about why this was the only option I had at the moment, filling this gap and stuff, but first, I have to kind of get it tacked into place here, right? Now, this is basically eyeballed in place, just like the customer quickly showed me as he dropped it off. A couple of quick tacks followed by a weld on the side without the gap was step number one. Pretty straightforward. Once that weld is finished, it comes time for filling this thing up. 
Now, I usually start with some light beads around the perimeter of the gap itself. These aren't heavy you know, beads or anything like that. They're definitely not decorator beads. They're, you know, they're just light amperage buildup work to effectively shrink that gap. So you want it to be relatively light buildup. You don't want it to be too light where you got holes and porosity and stuff like that. You need a good solid bead, but you don't really need to worry about, you know, blasting through it and, you know, getting the, the super friggin' powerful friggin' oh my gosh, weld into it. You know, you just, you just need a good solid buildup. It's a little bit lighter on the amps, so that way it doesn't uh, melt and dig as deep. We're also, at the same time, trying to make sure that this uh, orifice here for the breather stays open, and it has a full solid path, and I don't really want to go re-drilling through it. So, again, really light work is pretty much all you need to get around the perimeter of the part. Now, once that's done, it's time to add the filling, or all the guts, into this. Again, multiple passes using low amps for buildup is just, that's really all it takes, just Lots of buildup. Nothing but repetition and puddle control. I will say that I did step up to 332nd or 2.4 millimeter wire, which is actually not a great idea in this case. The problem with using larger filler is you need more amps to melt it, and that makes it a little bit harder to control your deposition rate or how much wire actually melts into the pool. It kind of tends to make the final bead look a little bit bulky or clumpy, uh, which is not usually desired look for this kind of thing. I mean, ideally you want every single bead to look nice and smooth and flowy and stuff like that. But, you know, hey, sometimes you make dumb decisions like this. And, uh, you know, I, at the end of the day, I really just should have stuck with 1 16th wire. You'll see uh, exactly what this looks like in just a couple of minutes here. I should probably also address this because I usually see it in the comments. Uh, the reason why I probably look really clumsy while I'm welding this is, one, there is a camera in my way, uh, which means if you guys can see it, I normally can't, and it's very difficult to work around. Uh, the second reason, which is the actual reason here, uh, I'm just out of practice. It's been a few weeks since I had welded before this. Uh, so, yeah, practice is one of those things that's very, very important to keep up with because this is kind of the result that you get out of uh, not practicing for a while. You get kind of... Kind of clumsy and not the greatest looking, but I do know at the end of the day that this will totally hold and everything will be just fine. It just doesn't look all that pretty. So let's take a moment to talk about why filling this gap is my only option. It really boils down to function for price in this case. As mentioned before, my customer is a regular and he is super cool, right? Love working with the guy. Now he just wants his race car and he wants it in a hurry. Now, the idea of first welding a tube to the bung and then to the valve cover was brought up, and it was definitely considered. But I didn't have the correct diameter of tube on hand, which means I would have had to order it, which takes more time. It also adds to the cost of it. In addition to that, it would also take more time to cut the valve cover out for clearance and angle for positioning. This is just not an amount of time that he was willing to wait for. The other problem here is space. Now, my customer made it very clear that this can't be any higher off the valve cover because the hose in the fitting wouldn't clear it. So, really, the only option here is to fill it up. Now, total time to do this job. <laughs> I actually didn't bother keeping track of it. Uh, he's a cool customer. Give me 40 bucks. Thanks for watching.